Welcome to the City Current Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference, empowering the good, and we love talking about sustainability. And that's why we're honored to have with us Professor Dodd Gilbreth. He is the Associate Professor of Sustainability and Director of Graduate Programs at Lipscomb University. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Always good to be with City Current You. Well, we appreciate everything you do, and you power the good on a number of fronts, and we'll definitely dive into sustainability in your world pretty heavily. But let's start with a little bit about Lipscomb University. For those who aren't quite familiar, who don't know all the amazing details in history, give us a little bit of a snapshot of the history and legacy with Lipscomb University. Yeah, we're over 125 years old, so uh, we've been doing this a long time. Uh, our, our founder was an amazing individual. He uh, uh, he gave his farm uh, to set up the university uh, during the big pandemics of the 19th century. Every, when all the wealthy people would land and farms would leave town, he would stay in town and, and go pick up Catholic nuns, which was a different religion than he practiced, and they would go out and work with the sick. So it, we that ethic and that integrity is really what established the service orientation of Lipscomb, and, and we are faith-based. We are a Christian-focused university. Well, let's dive into your world. When you talk about sustainability, give us a little bit of kind of your purview when you talk about the programs, the graduate studies, give us your world. Yeah, I, it, my world orients around helping people get to a higher plane of professional success and equipping them to do that. Uh, my world also involves taking people where they are. You know, climate change, the the threats associated with that, the fires, floods, uh, people migrations that we're seeing due to droughts and unlivable places. All of that is ginning up interest and concern. So we need all hands on deck. And so this program was created specifically to help all disciplines green up and to add climate action to their agendas. And of course, graduate graduate degrees specifically have been the most common uh, recognized credential by the market that someone is bringing to them value that, that they then can put to work in their business organization or, or government agency. And I think it's one thing, just like you're talking about, to see environmentalism, conservation, ESG, some of those pieces on one side. But then just like you're talking about, there's the business application that permeates all throughout. And so regardless of kind of what industry you're in, there's an application for you know the, the process of being greener and conservation. And so share a little bit of kind of how that works when you look at across all the different spectrums. Yeah, it's it's kind of strange, you know, the uh, environmentalism and sustainability has kind of gotten labeled as this other, you know, ideological agenda. But, you know, Richard Nixon created the EPA, you know, Richard Nixon signed. Uh, actually, he, did, he didn't sign the first version. A Republican from Tennessee, Howard Baker, overrode his veto of the Clean Water Act and made sure it became law. And But Richard Nixon signed the Clean Air Act, the National Environmental Policy Act. Ronald Reagan created the first, signed the first farm bill that stopped soil erosion in this country. And when we started this institute in 2007, our first initiatives were to have five green business summits because businesses are the most vulnerable to risk and liability and change and uncertainty. And they don't like any of that. They like they like products that they know customers need. They like customers who know what they want to buy. And they like being able to exchange value back and forth to keep people employed and keep the economy rolling. So this is really all about keeping prosperity alive. And oddly enough, uh, when the United Nations created uh, the first sustainability sort of brand initiative, they called it sustainable development. Um, and this triple bottom line, which is a business phrase, came out of that concept to make sure that we weren't uh, deficit spending uh, against people, we weren't deficit spending against the environment, and we weren't certainly bankrupting businesses. We had to have an all on board triple bottom line approach. When you look at some of the big headlines and it's global warming cities who uh, cities that are you know presumably going to be unlivable in the future water shortages also to things like the carbon trading and and you know some of those things fighting pollution what are the things and maybe it's all of those but what are the things that are on your radar as the big hot buttons the big things that that really have your attention right now 
Yeah, it's it's primarily uh, where we're going with the energy. I, th I think that's fair. You know, that's uh, the type of energy that we use, um, you know, either releases chemicals in the atmosphere that 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 change the chemical composition of the atmosphere that make it more dense and, and make it hold more heat and force that heat down rather than letting that heat go back out into space. Um, and, uh, you know, meeting the demand of professionals that are needed to meet that threat, just like, you know, we had to retool every factory in the United States leading up to World War II. Uh, you know, I think President Roosevelt actually created the first big uh, plane factories well before um, uh, Pearl Harbor because they saw this this problem coming. So we we see it coming. We know we have to prepare for it. Um, but, uh, you know, to go back to your point about the droughts and the floods, uh, you know, if you think about climate as being uh, something that, you know, we, we have seasons, we have cold seasons, we have hot seasons, and the planet has had cold climates and hot climates where we've had lots of ice on the planet or we have lots of tropical weather on the planet. Those pendulum swings, those wilder swings of going from an all ice age to an all tropical age represented a time when the earth was trying to stabilize itself, trying to reach an, uh, an equilibrium where the pendulum is just kind of swinging between the seasons, not swinging between the tropics and the ice ages. And the reason that pendulum is getting out of whack is because we're putting things into the atmosphere that's making it swing wide again. So all the places around the planet that are currently dry are probably going to get drier. All the places around the planet that are currently wet are going to get wetter. And that's why you see people moving away from those things towards the center of the planet where we have more average swings as opposed to more wild, dry, and wet swings because they're going to get worse if we don't do something about it. How does that and these conversations get woven into the curriculum? So in other words, how do all of these major topics get woven in to then be addressed through Lipscomb University and the students and the program? That's a great question. You know, the, the, the program is set up to deal with the triple bottom line first. You know, we make sure all of our students are literate in business and appreciate business because, you know, some of our students come from environmental backgrounds and they don't have that appreciation for what it took to turn a cell phone that used to be a computer in Oak Ridge, you know, pumping out calculations to something you could afford to carry on your hip and, and look up data anytime you wanted to find it. That's a business uh, value. And we make sure they're littered on the environmental terminology, environmental threats, environmental resilience. The, the planet is this great cushion or shock absorber that we need to keep healthy because it will absorb these changes that naturally occur or that unnaturally occur. And then we want them to understand people the psychology of getting along, the psychology of conflict, how do you manage that? And then we encourage them to specialize. You know, energy is the one where we spend a lot of focus because we're shifting from an energy that creates climate change to an energy that just creates a healthy economy without all these risks and threats and uncertainty. And then we also try to think about, you know, business and ESG. How do we measure success? Business cares a lot about accounting. And we're moving from just financial accounting to the metrics of success. Uh, and accountants are leading that discussion. I attended the American Accounting Association conference, and they had several sessions on it uh, at the last meeting I went to. And the other areas we focus on are like food systems, you know, what allows buildings not to leak energy so bad? How do we make them more insulated and, and healthier and, and do more things like capture water and reuse water? and uh, capture the right kind of waste and reuse that waste and create a circular economy with all of those things. Um, and we also focus on things like uh, what make, what, how, how do we make cities more resilient? Uh, how do we make them more livable because people are migrating towards cities as climates change? So, you know, there is a comprehensive agenda, but there's also a specialist agenda. Talk about how students can get enrolled in the program, the time frame. Give us some of those details. Yeah, we have uh, five enrollment periods a year. So August, October, January, March, and May. Um, uh, you don't have to have prerequisites uh, to jump in the program at any of those points. We've already got that built in the program. There's really only one prerequisite. Uh, you don't have to take a standardized test. Uh, you know, we try to make it very convenient because we need to get people out into the workforce, creating change. And uh, all of our classes are high flex, uh, you know, which means you can show up live. You can show up live on Zoom, live in class, live on Zoom, or you can watch recordings of lectures when you're just too busy to come to class. 
you know, the bottom line is we trust adults uh, to learn the way that they have time to learn uh, because we know we lose customers we don't, when we don't make it convenient and we lose opportunities to make the world better uh, when we're not putting people out in the marketplace fast enough. Speaking of convenience, you have a number of engagement opportunities for the community, and those are recorded and shared online as well. And so talk about some of the enrichment events. Yeah, I know you all are going to be providing some links uh, that people can go to to keep up with us. They can friend us on Facebook. They can uh, link with me on LinkedIn, and they'll see a stream of these things. It's not an obnoxious stream because... Uh, you know, we try to be really efficient with that. But uh, in in 2024, we have a whole series of, of webinars. Uh, we're going to have them live downtown at our Spark Center, but we're also going to broadcast them live on Zoom, and then we'll be recording them, as you said. Uh, I think the first one that fits uh, the timing of our discussion is February 14th, Careers in Sustainability Consulting. March 13th, careers and sustainable sites. How do we make the landscape more earth friendly and more uh, and less uh, risk and liability fraught and more value added? April 10th, careers in green building and so on. So we'll have we'll have all of this schedule listed uh, for people to see. But you can expect one every month through through May. You can expect one every other month after that. And um, uh, it's just a recording. You can always go back and watch them. But if you have any inkling into how sustainability affects your business or your or your profession or your, if you're interested in graduate school, all of these webinars are led by our alumni, some of whom have been out 12 years, uh, you know, working at Rivian or Tesla or or running their own composting commercial composting company or running their own ESG consulting firm. So you'll hear from practitioners that we actually trained. And and uh, and hear them explain uh, what they think of this field and where it's going. Uh, and we've already posted one webinar from last May on ESG that uh, that is all also available when you friend us and link with me on LinkedIn. Yeah, the easy link on that Facebook.com slash Lipscomb ISP. So Lipscomb That's ISP, right. and then on LinkedIn, you sharing it personally on yours. Um, as well. And so lots of easy ways to connect and follow the conversation and see all the information as it's posted. So share what, you know, you can't pick one, obviously, because, you know, when you talk about the alumni and all the amazing things they're doing and how they're putting this into practice and creating these new opportunities, what's one or two examples in terms of the good that's being done that you can share that put a smile on your face? Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I think of students, I, you know, a student who went through the program in the last year, who was working on a loading dock and was a geologist, you know, and, and running heavy equipment for a local landscaping company. Before he graduated, he got a job with a, a water consulting firm here in town. And he texted me the other day saying that he'd transitioned to another promotion with the state of Tennessee. Uh, you know, I've had a bartender, a bike mechanic. And um, what was the other person? Uh, I can't remember, but doing some really odd work. You know, they all got offered jobs that were more than twice their salaries after grad school. Uh, also had a six figure uh, corporate executive double his six figure salary. So there's a big demand for this and, and there's meaningful work out there. And that's what graduate degrees have really always done. That's what happened to me. You know, I, I went from working as a conservationist in a federal agency to working for the governor of Tennessee. And just yesterday, the Tennessean published an op-ed that I co-wrote with a friend of mine about the second governor that I worked for, that my graduate school degree equipped me to serve well. And all those accomplishments that were listed there uh, came, a lot of a lot of those came out of my graduate school experience as, as policy director for that particular governor. So uh, it's it's a great opportunity to change your life. Absolutely. Well, and to know that you're getting it firsthand from those who are working in the industry, experiencing it, have that expertise, that knowledge, the institutional knowledge, like there's a lot that goes into it. And just like you're saying, it allows you to take that next step in your career and be equipped for success on so many fronts. So yes. carry that into all the different connection points. We've you know kind of highlighted it, but Talk about your personal social media, LinkedIn. Where all can we go to follow these conversations, to connect in and learn more and take next steps? Well, I, I love LinkedIn because it's it's probably the least ideologically conflict-oriented, you know, social media there is out there. And people actually uh, 
have enforced the social norm of not letting that get too personal or too political or too debatable. It's, it's, it's a purely professional side. I, I would always go there. You can, you can link with organizations associated with sustainability. There are dozens uh, within your area of interest. So if you'll just kind of search within the LinkedIn search window, you can find all kinds of organizations. I hesitate to give one because this really is a disciplinary focused field. So there's lots of silos within sustainability. What we try to do is kind of level all of that so that people can be successful across disciplines and within their specialty. And then, you know, um, I would I would encourage you to stay connected, you know, to our links because we're going to feed you what, what we've already uh, gleaned as being the safest, most honest, most factual and the most efficient way of consuming this data. But um, uh, I trust humans to, to go out and find what fits their interests best. Well, and you've got a lot of easy websites, obviously Lipscomb.edu for Lipscomb University. So Lipscomb.edu is one website mentioned before Facebook.com slash Lipscomb ISP. So that's events, educational opportunities like the webinar and classes. There's also Facebook.com slash Lipscomb CLPS. And so that's uh, more opportunities to learn about events and upcoming opportunities there. So Lipscomb CLPS. Lipscomb ISP. So both of those Facebook and then your personal LinkedIn as well. So lots of easy connection points between that and then the Lipscomb edu, lipscomb.edu uh, website for Lipscomb University. So Dodd, thank you for all you and your amazing team do. Thank you for coming on the show. Hey, uh, it's always a pleasure. And you know, these annual visits can't come around soon enough. Higginbotham Insurance and Financial Services is proud to power the City Current Show. We're a people-first company that protects what matters most, the families, businesses, and trailblazers that keep our community going. As one of the nation's top independent insurance firms, Higginbotham is a single-source solution for business insurance, employee benefits, HR services, and personal insurance that's customized for you. We're here to serve you, the people you care about, and your community. Call 866-377-1959 or visit Higginbotham.com.